Hello, good morning to all. Um, this is uh, Otto, aka Outside of Genie. And I thought uh, just for the fun today, I will um, give you my preview, a video preview um, on today's racing at Turbantine, making use of this Zoom facility. I'm still learning it a bit, so if things doesn't go according to plan, and as they say, Houston, we have a problem, then just, uh, you know, bear with me. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do a race-by-race race discussion about horses that I like and so on, and maybe by doing that, I can guide you into the correct um, uh, direction in maybe picking a few winners. And, you know, my speciality is trying to find outsiders. And, uh, yeah, I'm also... Um, uh, a lot of people contacted me because I wasn't doing any tipping uh, lately, and they asked me if I could, you know, start doing my selections again. So I'm launching officially on um, Saturday again, but I'll do, just for the fun, I'll do it today and tomorrow at Fairview for you guys, so you can see uh, how I look and you know, try and find uh, the winners. So let us start, um, let me just press this button here, share screen. I'm gonna share the screen, I hope everything works out well here. All right, so we kick off today's racing um, with um, uh, uh, I've got a policy that um, I don't normally tip on um, on uh, um, hang on guys, I think there's a bit of a problem, a problem here. Let me just quickly sort this out. Screen, share, there you go. Okay, so I'm back here. So let's try again and see what uh, transpires. Um, I lost my connection there for a moment. Um, I'm with Calcom and they so unreliable. Um, sorry to say that. So to get back to race one, it's a juvenile plate. But what I did was I you know, look at a few horses and I'll just give you some pointers of horses that you can in maybe include into your play. So, um, you know, because I see this, if you look at the betting, you will see that these. Uh, um, very strong favorite. Um, I see uh, uh, number four, but why 11 to 10, a first timer from Michael the Cock, and I also have a first timer in race two. So I think there's a lot of doubles going to run on this. But uh, yeah, as I said, I don't put the house on, on, on first timers, especially juveniles. But just give me a few, a few pointers. Um, the horses that I'm going to look at is number number eight. Uh, Java, else Astro plays number three, and in number ten, Secret Strike. So let's look at that. Um, the reason why I fancy a little bit of number three um, is this filly is by is by is now out of uh, society as Willow Magic, and I think you know that um, it looks like he is going to throw a few winners. So he's still a, a, a new sire. The, he has thrown a few winners. And then the me is by Jetmaster, which um, to me, it's always, I mean, Jetmaster upgrades his me. So um, keep an eye on this one. Dennis Swartz is riding. Then we let's go to number eight. Um, number, well, just to quickly get back to the favorite year, number nine. Uh, where is it now? The favorite year is uh, number four. It's by Deep Field. I see the other one is in the next race is also by Deep Field. I mean, obviously, I don't know that uh, this reading, but I know Deepfield has produced a few winners. So, um, yeah, I, I see there was bred by the owner, Sheikh uh, Raid Al Maktoum. So, all right, so keep your eye on that. Um, unfortunately, in the past, I've lost a lot of money on the cop first timers, and, and I'm not eating the, the trainer, but um, people, whenever they see the cop, the bookmakers, they just price up as favorites, whether the horse has got a chance or not. So, uh, yeah, I was going to go to number 10. Okay, number 10, um, the Secret Strike. You know, it's by Lucifer Fort now, Lucifer Fort, um, and by Strike Smart. This horse looks like it will be a stayer. It's got Michael von Rensburg on, um, riding for his father in law, Kevin Hunter. Drawn 12. I don't know, just, you know, throw this thing in your quartets if you want to. Um, Sometimes these stayers, they, they do sometimes they have a bit of a ability and sprint. And uh, yeah, then maybe you, you, know, you can't hurt. If it comes in, it will probably relatively pay for a lot of money. 
And then I just want to mention this number nine mode. You know, this mode <laughs> tickles me. Um, I mean, he ran this mode the first time after the rest. But before that, he ran three lengths. He was second fastest to 400, although in a slow time, 400 to finish. Um, slowing to stride. So maybe if you want to throw that, like if you do a, a firm quartet or something, put it in for third or fourth. Uh, if it comes in, obviously it will increase your, your payment. But okay, so I don't have official uh, 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 selections for this race. So let's move on to the second race. Uh, where again, we, we did say that um, uh, Mr. Le Cox was uh, this number one, he's the favorite. Nine, nine, uh, three, what is it? What was it beating on that one? It was um, 19 to 20 ish. It's very short. Eh? You know, you can't make money on that. So, yeah, I, I've selected also a few horses. Um, the one that I've been looking at is number five, obviously, Harry's Secret. It ran a very good race. It, you know, it was 45 to one, and it came behind Mount Pleasant. And apparently, Mount Pleasant, and I also know that it wasn't a juvenile play. Mount Pleasant is apparently is a very good horse. Uh, he won first time out in a juvenile. Then the horse that ran second then went to run in a future last uh, Saturday in Durban. And that ran, I think, ran second or third or something. It was there or thereabouts. So this might not be bad form. So, and also was first fastest, and I like it, you know, 24, uh, under 24 seconds, 400 to finish. That, that, that is not, not too bad. Then um, we have a look at number eight. No breeze. No breeze is um, at one run, um, and it didn't feel too bad. I mean, this was, um, you know, he he was there and thereabouts after the the first race. It had made a bit of a noise. It's by Futura, uh, by out of a victory moon May. I, I love that breeding. I think it's not bad breeding. So definitely a horse to, to look at. Let's see what it's on the betting, the breeze. Currently 25 to one, a nice horse to include into your, into your play. And um, I think this is over the 69 meter. You can watch this horse because I'm sure over a longer distance, this horse will probably uh, improve. But you know, still now it's a young, young horse. It showed pace. Um, definitely at 25 to one, I think there's definitely a horse that you need to include in anything that, that you play. Then number nine, Pinda Nzala. Yeah, that ran um, that ran well before the rest. The last time out, it was second, uh, 23.9, 400, four fastest 400, just failed. Straight him, always a danger, especially if you ride for Clinton Binder. They've got a good record together. So um, he has run in one or two winners for him, I think, although he doesn't show here, but I know for a fact that he has ridden a few winners for Clinton Binder. Um, the horse's name escaped me now, but I think you won twice in a row with that horse, but I can't remember the name quickly now. So then um, I want to go down to number um, number 11, also is called Nice Peace Horse. Now, you know, this, is, this horse, is, I think, is like 40 to 1 or something like that. Let me quickly have a look here. Yeah, it's 40 to 1. Guys, just throw this horse in, you know. This horse, uh, in the second last race, it showed pace um, behind elusive women. Um, and it was just before the break. And then last time out, I don't know what went wrong. But I always like, I don't always pick winners on just on the last run. I do like this horse on the breeding. And that's why I'm tipping it to you. It's a captain of all that I assume that uh, he has produced a few runners out of a national emblem, me, me. And I can tell you, national emblem always upgrade his me. So um, definitely always to throw in. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, maybe if it comes into the back end of your court pits, then, um, you know, and another horse, uh, I mean, I'm just giving you a few pointers, guys. I mean, I, I know money is tight. and um, But if you play a quartet and you play a multiple, just put this number 12 in for four. You know, these got nice piece, and he has got the thing of getting P horses to run. And, and um, this horse has just on this run behind Master of his guys. He ran 1.25 up behind the winner. Yeah, he showed some, showed some pace. Um, after the race, he only faded over the last 400 meters. So definitely something that you need to include into your uh, 
into your into your play then if there's a scratching in this race definitely put in this horse Winston, western lion um, i think this horse um, is going to improve on his on his first run so if that does come in include that into your play all right so then we move on to the third race which is also a juvenile plate but this is over um over 1400 meters and um yeah, um, I if um, yeah, obviously number one must be the favorite. It is one well first time out, no no problem. Bump at start, drew away, so it I mean it does have to form. Number two, elusive women, dangerous, getting minus four. You must always take that in account. Last time, be mind play, present. It you know it was there, but um, I actually fancied it that day, but. Um, I think this, I think the horse was outpaced, and by Wiley Hall, out of elusive quality, me, this horse definitely will uh, will have a chance over 1400 meters. Let's quickly look at the betting here on this horse. This horse is currently in the betting at um, 13 to, to two, so we can't uh, taking uh, maybe a few, um, you know, uh, uh, each ways. So um, yeah, I mean, there's a, quite a few horses that has got chances. Uh, but there's a few horses that I particularly want to point out to you. War of Atina, the day that won, uh, War of Atina, it was, I, I liked it that uh, I got a better 25 to 1. I had uh, a lousy 10 rand on the horse that day. And it won quite well and it was a strong field. Now they're putting it over further. Act of War out of a Requiem Mare. You know, drawn five. I think it should also be dead and dead about. Not a horse to discard. Zarnix, you know, Flower Alley out of a forward, forward um, that can also, you know, that that run a good uh, race before the rest and behind Water of Atina. But now they've put it back over the 1400 meters. Just for interest, what is the betting on that? 22 to 1. I can't believe that, you know, I can't believe that this horse is 22 to 1. But I think the problem here is, yeah, that is what put me off was the draw 16, you know, that is going to be tough for that horse to win from that draw. But let me just move on to some other horses that I want to point out to you. Um, a horse that I uh, also come again, Captain of L by National M Assembly Mayor. We had it in the previous race as well. This horse um, ran over the 1160. It was there, but then, you know, it uh, faded. I think that distance is too short. I think the 1400 meters will be more to this horse's liking. It's not often that um, Kumala do ride for a fortune, but he's riding for fortune. I see he's had a few winner, uh, runs for him and a few winners. So, um, I mean, the strike rate looks like uh, it's about 20%. That's not bad because six wins out of 35 rides uh, gives around about 20%, which is not bad. Then another horse that I like here is uh, number 10. Swiss Bank. It's a trippy out of a Ford with me. Again, it ran a very good race uh, in, in, in the first race um, behind Dubai Princess and then Dubai Princess followed up that and last time she was uh, she was second and then it didn't, I don't know what happened here, it says here, pull saddle, oh, saddle slip short, but it's also drawn 13, but I think this is a nice horse to throw into your quartets and trifectas and swingers and stuff. Uh, the betting on that one, number 10 currently is uh, 25 to 1, you know, that's good. It looked, it looked like there's good value around uh, at Turpentine today. So that might be a, a, a good thing. And then the last one I want to point out to you in this race is number 12 with our blessing. This horse, um, you know, he started not too good, but in his last two races, he, he before the rest, he, um, he started improving. So watch out for this horse. Dion Sampson is a very competent jockey. He's drawn four over the 1400 meters, show space. Um, so again, without our blessing, number 12, 20 to one, can't hurt, throw it into your selections. Well then, uh, we come into the fourth race where I was forced to make a selection because of the pick six standing here, uh, starting here. And um, that's also a juvenile plate for um, uh, over 1400 meters. And yeah, my first selection, that is my, Guys, you will see, I always give a, a first selection, an outright winner. That is the horse that I think can win the race. And in my other two selections, is normally selections that outsiders that I think can can win or place. 
and I don't normally give that in a particular order. So my first, my selection here is number four, Al Handy. Uh, Al, um, Al Handy, oh, let me just get back to Al Handy there. Now I'm the wrong horse here. Number four, Al Handy. Number four, Al Handy. Alhami, sorry, Alhami. Um, let's just look at the betting here. The betting here is um, as follows. Um, golden season, number nine is favorite, five to two. Pure self, first time at also fortune, five to two. So Andrew Fortune has got the first two horses in the betting. Then the contractor, and then this horse is 11 to two. Um, it's currently in, it's drawn one, and it's Calvin Murray on. Um, this was, I, I really think, I do think Star Wit is a star witness by a redoubt choice, uh, me. I think this 1200 meter was very, was really too short for this horse. It was outpaced, um, and, uh, 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 behind the only man. And I think it looks to me because in the next race, there's also a few horses from only man. Um, it might be that this only man four might not be too bad. And I really think the 1400 meter draw one will suit this horse much better. Although I would think this would be starting running over 16 and 1800 meters. This run, I'm sure they just showed the horse the course. And I'm picking this horse today to come to, to, to win or to go close to, to winning. But um, anything, I would, would think that this horse at least will be in the placings. So then my outsider selections for this race is number three. And again, I just want to point out again my selections. I don't my outside selection. I don't give out in def, you know in um, a, a specific order. So um, number three is um, the contractor. Why so mowing? This horse has won last time, and it won actually quite nicely. It been won by two links, overreach and everything, and it's still won under fourteen fifty inside track. And it won by two lengths. Now, normally when a horse wins by two lengths, he normally wins it quite comfortably because you know that the jockey didn't have to, you know, like push him out up to the line because you don't want to, you don't want to hurt your, 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 your small horses, your, your, your juveniles. So I'm sure this horse was just driven out to the finish. So that can come in again. The betting on that, the contractor currently 11 to 2, it's not a bad price. Then another horse I wanted to look at, and it's a first timer and, um, yeah, obviously for the for the pick six you don't need to put it in, but you know sometimes it can't hurt to put in a horse even if it's a first timer. If it wins, then in, and you've got a second horse, you double up, or maybe you've got it in and in a, a donkey round second, and at least you had a winner. So you know it it is a catch twenty two situation because I have seen and myself I've lost pick sixes where I I never put in the first timer and then a donkey ran second and I was stuffed. So. Um, I have got a policy in my pick six. If I like a first timer in the pick six, I put the first timer in. So that if the donkey ran second and, I, and, and but the first timer wins, then I do still, I'm still in. And I think here is a case in point. There is a lot of first timers, but number eight picks, uh, Eskimo Pie, is VAR out of a Western Winter Me. Man, this thing is bred out, out of the purple. You can't go wrong. The only problem is it's on 13. So, uh, and I think it's about, what is it in the betting? Uh, where it's like 11 to 2 in the betting. So, you never know. They might take it to the front. It might stay on. I don't know. But definitely the horse that I will include. There's another horse that I looked at and then, but then I saw it's drawn 16. And Penny is riding. Believe me, I've got nothing against him. But I'm, in, I'm sure if my, Mr. De Kock thought that this horse has got a good winning chance, you probably would have put on um, like a more experience. Not that I say Penny I hasn't got experience. Please don't take me wrong. I'm not shooting down the jock. <coughs> but anyway, sorry for that. Um, I hope it's not the COVID-19 cough that. And then another boss you can have a look at is number five, black to black. Um, fire and ice, never dangerous, but I mean, this horse ran second fastest 400 to finish. Although a little bit in a slow time, 25 seconds, you, when a horse runs on from the 400 meters, you want it to be over the sprinting distance, like between 1,000, 1,400. You're looking at 24 seconds and under, then, then that was good. So it was a little bit slow, um, and it was 8.75 lengths behind, although it ran third. I'm not sure about the strength of the field, but definitely always that you can include into your pick six and all of that. So 
let me just move on to the next race. I just want to make, don't want to make this, this too long. Then we came uh, to race five, where when I looked at the card, my initial selection was number one, but then I saw that was uh, withdrawn. So my first selection in this race is number four. Number four is uh, Incor. Incor. Now, this is a twice over by Northern Guest. I know Golden Apples, he's thrown quite a good few um, horses. I can't give you all the names now. I can't remember that. But he just always came off a rest in January and ran in March. And it really ran an improved run over 1,600 meters. Now they're putting it over 1,400 meters, which is about, um, you know, about 200 meters shorter. But I'm sure this horse will be is one of those horses that is going to improve with time. Maybe he was still a young horse. They've got Hewitson on, drawn free. Uh, Inco reached the good of betting quickly. The betting says Inco is um, 8 to 1. Although we have got this uh, the strong favorite here from Alec Laird and Kumalo, 14 to 10. But this horse has come off a very long race and, um, you know, longer than some of the other horses. And you, you might just need the run. Uh, definitely, I won't be running. I won't be rushing to the bookmakers to take 14 to 10. I do have a sneak uh, suspicion this horse might uh, drift come race time. Um, then, um, now guys, I just want to mention like when I do this preview, I sometimes mention stuff that I can't mention when I give my selection. So, um, this is an important tool that you can use in your things. I mean, uh, yes, it takes maybe uh, sometimes. 40 minutes out of your time. But I mean, if you're a serious punter and you are after after information, then you need to get you need to get hold of this video every day because uh, I've seen in the past, I've given some information which the guy said to me afterwards, geez, I'm so glad you mentioned that because I never had it in my selections. So then my other selection in this race is number two, Arcon Valley. Um, yeah, I don't know what happened. It's just, it just got inconvenient at the 200 meters, this horse inconvenient at, at 1,200 meters and it lost its position. I watched the race. I actually fancied it at that. Oak. And it's a soft falling rain by a, a Sing Spiegel me Atlantic Oak. I know Atlantic Oak. I think she won one or two small futures. This horse doesn't run too bad behind Irish Dame. But they now do, they now bring it back to the, um, to the, um, the 1,600 meters. So definitely an uh, outsider, if we look at the betting in this race, uh, Arcon Valley is like 10 to 1. So you need to include that into your, into your play. And then my other selection, sorry guys, sometimes to scroll with this online thing, it really is a bit of a, a, bit of a problem. So I just want to get back to race 5 because uh, you scroll and then you scroll past. So race five, my other selection is number 12. Outsider selection is number 12. Uh, Jarry Alain. This was also um, ran a week ago. And I also do think, again, 1,100 meters, far too short, soft falling rain. Um, I, I think this horse is definitely going to be involved in the finish uh, today. And the betting on that one is like also 10 to 1. Then you can also look at this Princess Zina, um, but my concern was drawn 12, but also reasonably well. La Repinta has thrown quite a number of winners. This horse didn't finish too bad, four fastest to 424.3, slow, lost one link. I think also will be involved in the finish, 11 to 2, Prince Zina, it's third favorite, 6 to 1. So that is the thing that, um, you know, and then we, obviously we got the favorite. Um, that uh, she ran two good races. Um, where's the favorite? Uh, uh, Lady Amethyst, um, five links behind with, with, with the Rosa and uh, the state in Arona, if I'm not mistaken, that one again last week, but it only ran in December. We're talking nearly 200 days off. So, and it's also drawn 13 and, and you know, Sometimes that draw can be a killer, and yeah, so that's why I say I won't be rushing to take that 14 to 10. I just want to mention something I just saw here that I also was when I did my study was a horse that I also liked a little bit. Um, two horses actually that you can put into your play. Five Mother of the World, Wiley Hall. I do like the Wiley Halls, um, you know, just for interest's sake. When he won the July, I was preaching that horse from May. 
uh, that year, I think it was 2014 that he won in July. I got 50 to 1. I had 40,000. I could win 40,000 rand that day. When he won in July, unfortunately, the horse was scratched. But again, drawn 15. Otherwise, I would have definitely included that as a uh, tip of man. And also, this bird watcher, um, I think if you do play quartets and stuff, you might want to include as drawn seven, getting minus two and a half. Did show reasonable form before the break. So let's now move on to race six. Um, race six is um, also a 1600 meter maiden plate. Sorry, guys, you know, as I said, it's difficult to scroll with this thing up and down, going up and down, but I'm trying my, my best. Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> All right, so let's look at the maiden plate. Uh, quickly, the betting, we're betting the field uh, two to one. Grace from above, which is a first timer, and uh, yeah, so it's difficult because you don't you don't know. Um, I'll, I'll have a look at that just now. But in race six, my first selection is um, actually number nine, which is twelve to one, which is a value bid. If um, that will be a value bid for me, so let's look at number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Fantasy Force. It's a path fork by Rock of Cree Balta Me. Now, uh, you know, this is what I always say. Sometimes trainers give this horse this one run just to show them the track. And this horse was slow, one link, no threat, but it, it ran eight and a half links behind the holy man. He'd been dead all the you know, all the way, seven links, nine links. But the thing that draws me is that boys and girls 23.6 second fastest 400 to finish that shows to me that this horse has got a bit of ability um, because to run that it definitely that for me is a pointer so i'm telling you now this number nine i think will be involved in a finish if it maybe can even win this race um and at the odds, it's very really good odds. Definitely, horse not to uh, to 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 leave out. So um, I'm preaching this horse on, in terms of that 400 to finish, and that the 1200 meter was only a pipe opener. Now it's doing 1600 meters, and I do think that that's this might be the business for the day. I don't tell to you now to go and put your house on this horse, but at the price it is, it's, you can definitely have a small tickle on it. Just to quickly look at the favorite. It's a Duke of Marmalade out of a, uh, easing a long mare. I don't know that breeding. But um, an interesting thing I heard from a trainer a while ago. I spoke to a trainer and um, he told me that the Duke of Marmalade fillies is better than the Duke of Marmalade colts and geldings. I've got no statistics to confirm that, but what I've seen is that it do seems to me that the Duke of Marmalade Phillies ran better than the Colts. But just this observation, it's not a fact. So don't take me on on that. Okay. So then my second selection in this race is number, my outsider selection will be number three. Let me just get to number three. Number three is Royal Tiger. Royal Tiger. Dennis Swartz. Now, um, on Royal Tiger, this horse do show some pace. It has two runs since uh, the, 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 the lockdown, um, over 69 meters. And it was there and there about definitely a horse that you do need to include into your trifectas and quartets. And then my other selection in this race is number four. Unfortunately, this horse is drawn very wide and that uh, but i do think majestic thunder if you look at his last race on a 1200 meters now 1600 meters 4.2 top line uh, but there again if you look at that 23.4 fastest 400 to finish juggle on board minus one and a half this horse will be running on at the end majestic thunder a majestic thunder currently 12 to 1 in the betting so definitely something that you would like to include into your play. 
Then there's where the other horses. There's one interesting thing that I uh, was this artisan. Now, artisan is written by Lionel Hewitson, and um, he does not ride too often for for Joey Somo, so that can be a, a, a jockey strike. But again, drawn 15, he's going to find it hard from there. Then there's a lot of people who like this Peter Sham, but geez, I don't know. This horse doesn't run one good race in a row. Um, I'm not sure what happened where he finished. Oh, he was reserved, so he didn't even run. Uh, so he actually, the last time he ran was in December. So I won't be rushing, putting my money, my money on Peter Sham, uh, Peter Shaw, definitely. Um, so that is my selections for, for this race. And then we move on to race number seven. Um, race number seven is, um, yeah, here's my race number seven. My selection is number one. Um, Come on now. You know, this scrolling really frustrates me. Now, this horse, unfortunately, is only two to one. And I don't like, I mean, when I like to tip a best bet, I really want to, um, uh, you know, give value. But it's 22 to one, and value is value. Um, this horse ran a few good races. The edit ran in a future behind Spirit of the Group. I mean, I think Spirit of the Group, so this has got a merit rating of 79. I think Spirit of the Group must be near, nearly a, a, a hundred or something like that. And he, he, that was like a future uh, Empress Palace, you know, ready to run a race. And then right after he ran two good races, he was back heavily last time. But since that, he's been gelded and I do think that this horse will run a very good race today. And for me, this will be my best bet for the day. Then for outsiders, uh, you can look at number four. Number four is uh, Untamed Tiger, uh, Dory Sham. This horse also has got Pierre Stradom on board. Um, Pierre doesn't ride too often for Dory, but uh, he's at, um, you know, this, uh, he's at, two seconds and a four for her. And this horse was also there and thereabouts, um, you know, always running a place. So there's definitely the danger to, I think there's one of the dangers to number one. And then I want to point out something to you. Um, uh, my other outsider is this number five, Al Ramanzi. Now, I can't remember ever seeing Lionel Hewitson riding a horse for Romeo Francis. Romeo is one of my favorite trainers, a small guys. A small guy, always trying. Um, I've won some pick sixes where I included him just because I liked him and, you know, I, I've got the respect for him. Now, there was a time where if, Ro if Pierre Stradham got on a Romeo Francis horse, you know, you knew that was the business for the day. So I'm just wondering, could this be the start of a new partnership between Mr. Francis and Mr. Hewitson and that he might you know, come and win this race for Mr. Francis, just for interest, what is the betting? The betting is 14 to 1 and, and Untamed Tiger is 11 to 2. So could that be the start of a new uh, partnership? I don't know, but I knew in the past when um, Pierre Stradon was getting on top of a, a Roma Francis was that was the business for the day. Um, there's just another two horses I want to mention in this race. Um, I believe number 12, uh, there's strong talk, and that's also the favorite, Pomodoro out of a dynasty me, very well bred. Mr. Ferraris um, is the owner with Mr. Peters from the Hyper Pain Syndicate, but here is the problem. Drawn 12 might be a problem. Then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mention the dog. This horse came in because of the scratching. There was a scratching, so this horse, number 13, Watushi. I don't know. Uh, I just got a feeling that this horse might sneak into a third or a fourth place. So do add it into your um, quartet if you do play. Uh, it's drawn four. Paul Peter is on fire. Um, so I think this horse might come up on, on us in, in, in running a place. 
I'm now moving on to race number eight, and I really need to move on because this is getting too long for you guys. I know you guys are getting frustrated because it takes so long. But as I said before, you know, sometimes you have to, um, you know, this is part of your decision-making process. So you had a favorite is number one, Cosmic Ray, and the horse is um, like 19 to 10. And they do have a very good chance. And again, here we've got um, Sam Rock, the unraced horse, four to one from Mr. Sean Terry. Um, but my selection in this race is this seven to one shot. Let's just look at it. It's again, Dory Sham. Guys, I just want to mention something. Um, I'm a big believer of when you start following a, a stable that... Um, when they start running places, you need to start following them. And But this is one of the reasons of what I'm looking at this horse. But what struck me on this horse was this. One length behind Summer Pudding. I mean, we all know the quality of Summer Pudding. 3.25 behind Mill Queen. Then also New Women. I think that is also won another race. So, I and mean, then something happened, and this horse just went off the boil um, because it came off a rest in September. And it battled to find form. And then it comes from a, from a rest since October, and it runs 2.25 lengths behind top line, and, you know, extra late. And I'm sure that this race would have uh, brought it on. So, definitely... Uh, that is my selection, Brian Nauwu, um, and I'm tipping it because of this run behind Summer Pudding, because that was really a good run. And yeah, you know, this was, um, and you know, extra late, but it's, it, it sort of kept on a little bit, because you look at a 24.2 fastest 400 to finish, it's not too bad, uh, you know, 400 to finish, although it was eight fastest, but it kept on. And that, uh, for me, that's always a point that we know always keep on going in a finish. You need to, to, to want to look at that. So then my other, my outsider selection in this race is um, number six. Number six. Pascal Samor, Craig Bantam, drawn two. Um, and... This horse also was there about, he's always running around six lengths, seven lengths. Um, and last time it was slow, lost at the start. But what I like about this or this filly is the breeding, you know. Begin it, the Ricks, whatever you call it. I'm always battling with that name, with that name. Um, by uh, 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 Pascal Moon by Victory Moon. Now, um, because I know that she has thrown a few winners. So it's just purely on the breeding that I'm selecting this. It just shows some pace. It might now improve after the rest. So um, you know, as it, we're looking for the outsider, that is a good outsider to include into your play. Then um, another horse that I want to talk about. Now, with D Maroon, I'm, you're not always sure what to do, but I like the breeding of this horse. It's a future... Uh, future Futura uh, out of uh, Tiger Reach Me, Futura. And I do like that. Um, so maybe throw this in as a, a, a nice outsider that if it comes in, it will make it pay. Then we have got the uh, one of the, this is a second favorite, it's a captain of all out of a National Assembly Me. Uh, I don't you may call it me, I'm not sure what she's done. Um, but yeah, um, you know, Ferraris, uh, the young Ferraris with. Terry and the US and that can always be a bit of a, you know, you, um, you know, they have got the ability to win the races. So of the rest of the field, there's not much that one can talk about, um, except um, this path to stars. Um, I think what is path to stars in the betting is um, a 12 to 1. Um, you know, what I want to mention is getting minus two and a half. And it was also there and there about, but, uh, but it came off the rest. And um, yeah, broke through, faded. So maybe that took out of it. But it's also a nice par for uh, fully out of a Western winter mare. So this will also be a, a horse that I would throw in at the back end of my quartets. There it ran um, six lanes behind Lady of Steel. 
Okay, we all know Lady of Steel ran, I think he's won now five races and not beaten. And then we also have Storm Report here, uh, also have got a chance. So also uh, open race. Then we move down to um, race number nine, race number nine, come on. Which is another, the, the last maiden plate over 1600 meters. And here my first selection is number five. Although the favorite is number one, I'll talk about number one just now. But my selection here is number five, the Soul Connection. So let me quickly just look at the betting. Um, the betting says number five is like seven to one, number one is five to two. Now, both of them competed in the same race, uh, no, not in the same race, but uh, over the same distance, uh, but on different days. And I like this run of this horse behind the loose of Jack. No extra late. Before that, he was 1.7 saddle slip, saddle slip. Um, I'm sure this horse is going to give a good account of himself today. Again, it's, it's by that stallion that I'm batting to pronounce. And uh, by a like uh, Coniston Mayor, so that, that would bring in the speed. So that is my uh, selection. And then my outsider selections in this race is number four. <coughs> Sorry, first of fire. Um, it did show a lot of speed last time. Outfaded um, over the last 200 meters was in the same race as number one, only man. So uh, number one um, uh, um, is number 99. That um, I know Kuna Peace has said in interviews that he expect a lot of this horse. I think that day behind follow my path, he was actually looking for the horse to for that horse to win that race, but unfortunately, then and then last the second last time out the travel man that take it to the front over the 400 meters and they just died the last 200 meters. There was no nothing left. So then I brought it back over the 1200 meters and it won ran quite a. a a good race, but my thinking is that he ran that because he might um, have been a bit fresh. So you'll have to see if he can, re you know, uh, uh, reproduce that run, because it does. It do shows that um, on the breeding, he would probably be looking for further. So if he runs against, you know, a nice uh, 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 sprinters with ability, he might be found out. Then my other selection is um, number six, and that is uh, Titleist. Uh, also ran in the race behind Elusive Jack, did show some pace and um, might improve after the run. So, I um, mean, another one I just want to mention where is that horse now? Um, Golden Duke didn't run a bad race, also ran in the same race behind the Holy Man, left extra late, so that can also be involved. Then, yeah, this is the horse I want to mention. I don't know what happened. Um, it, this always showed, you know, good um, uh, in the second and third run, showed good improvement after he ran in the future uh, on his debut. And then last time behind Follow My Path, um, incidentally, it was the same race as we, um, uh, Follow My Path is the same race where this number one was also ran in. He just fell in a hole and I say choked up. So maybe they've um, you know, sorted out this problem, but now I'm not sure whether they're using this race, um, you know, just to give the horse a prep or he yeah, has got a serious chance, but definitely a, a horse that I will put in any quartets that I play just for the odd chance that he might, you know, um, have a good run after the race. I do see they paid 360,000 for the horse. So it must have been a bit of a good look at. Um, let me just see if there's anything else. And then, uh, then further down, there's a lot of first timers. There's a first timer from um, Mr. Terry by Lingari. Yeah, I'm, I, I still have my opinions about Lingari, whether it's good or bad. He has thrown some winners, but some of his horses really, they run really bad. Then we got the, also another first timer, Pomodoro, Hewitson Riding. Victory Dance by Victory Moon, nicely bred. So, um, yeah, definitely. Um, uh, uh, also, open race. We got another power four gear by uh, made by Dash on Semi, Pierce Trade on for Clinton Binder. 
it did show some pace, 24.1 24 400 to finish last time. So it can improve. Oh, this is a horse that I, I forgot to mention that I wanted to mention to you. Um, what a what? This is bred for speed. What a winter out of a Q Danzig me, guys. This will be this will be sprinting. Um, so keep an eye on that. Um, yeah, you here we got another Duke of Marmara, but that is a, a reserve I see. Um, so this is what this is one that I wanted to mention to you guys. And uh, yeah, so that concludes my uh, preview. I hope you make a few bucks and uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'll be back tomorrow for we'll do a preview for you for, um, for Fairview. So break a leg. <laughs>